Well, I can't believe it, but we're up to NorCal 40B session number 17. I think this is getting completely out of hand. So while you were away, I went ahead and uh, took this list of parts. And these are the things that I have pre-installed ready for soldering. And we'll have to finish this off because I did put in uh, C29, the 10 microfarad, and we also just put in R4, the 8.2 meg. So I believe that is all of the parts that will allow us to build this little square here. So we are going to go in, and well, I think the ink pen is justified. So we, uh, we were able to break this, so I'm gonna put an X there for us. So we get an X here and we get an X down here. These are no longer true, those jumpers are out. So as we go along, let's give it a quick check. So we have R4, this 8.2 meg, that is right there. So we can mark that off in yellow. And both Q2 and Q3 are here. So I'm gonna mark those. And we have the resistor network that is here. That's the uh, 2.2 meg resistor network. So that takes care of one, two, three, four resistors. Yeah, that's, that's it. So I think that means, I think that's a six resistor pack. So I think there are a couple of unused resistors there. And then we can see D1 and D3, so I can mark those two off. Let's see here, D1, D3 are in there, and C28, C28, C21, and C20. So the, there's C28, and we need C19. C20 and 21 are these, these uh, caps that we already had in from a previous session. We need D4, D5, and D6. Those are the, uh, I believe those are black diodes. Yeah, so those are here. There's D5, D6. I'll mark those two off. Down there. And the 10K pot is in there. So that gets marked off. C29 is the 10 microfarad that's in there. Uh, so I need to find, uh, let's see. D1, D3, D2, so we can mark D2 off. Now I need to find D4. I think D4 was an odd place. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. so D4 is, way down here by the VFO core, and R3 is down there also. So those are these two. So that should complete that circuit. Um, OC19, the 0.01, I believe is also in there. There it is right there, so we can mark that off. So that completes the components for the AGC. And then I just noticed, I forgot about this, C30 is a 2.2 microfarad. That's the audio feedback into the AGC. So I believe C38 is not stuffed. It's not. So there it is right there, a hole. So there's one quick oversight. So we'll find C38, we'll add that to the mix here. I didn't pull that out as part of the AGC parts. So we're down to a fairly small number of parts now. It's starting to look encouraging, which means there must not many, be very many parts in the transmitter because we don't have a lot of parts left. So this is, that's a hundred microfarad, that won't do. We're looking for a 2.2. There's a blue one that's 10 and a blue one that is 2.2, that'll work. All right, so the 2.2 conveniently has a plus right there. So we can find the minus, which is the short lead, put the long one through the plus hole. And that goes in. All right, now we're up 
two, marking that one off. And doing some soldering, I think. So that was this. Okay, that was C30. And if you're building along or if you got some progress, tell me where you're at. Because I think we are, the AGC honestly is pretty <laughs> uneventful. We just don't have that many stations on the band until I go do my next interference. Uh, I'm gonna go on an interference, um, I guess you'd call it identification run first. So I'm gonna put the mobile whip on the car, pull it in the garage. It's a, it's a short um, ham stick, so it'll fit. We'll get on 40 meters in the garage and then we'll back out, take a drive around the neighborhood and see what happens to the noise. I know that when I get away from here, uh, for example, to take my kid to piano, it's super quiet down by her house. So I think we might find something interesting. So we'll flip the old vice around here. Hopefully make it so you guys can see it. That looks like a pretty good angle. And so I can also solder while you guys watch. So I think that might work. That's kind of the uh, forest we're working on right now. So <laughs> people told me, don't turn off the camera. We want to see it all. So for those of you who don't want to see it all, you can zoom forward until you see me flip the board back around. And that will mean the parts are all in and chopped off. So I'll do this quickly as possible. And we hopefully will have AGC that does no harm because right now there are no strong signals to actually cause it to do something for us. And while we're here, um, if you watched one of the previous videos, I've got the NorCal 40A with the KC1 powered up. And let's, let's take a little look. I, I have to be distracted a bit. So that's that one and it's turned on. So let's just see if there's anything. So 40 is the middle of the, the dial on that dial marker. Not hearing anything above 40. And you have to tune a bit slowly because the tuning's pretty sharp because it's a single turn pot. But you can see it's completely empty. <laughs> pretty boring. Even the broadcast station that I normally could hear on 7040 isn't there. So. That might be it, but it, boy, is it faint. So we got to go on that interference run soon. And here's the cool feature of this. We'll, we'll tell you where we are. So we're at 7041. And that means that we're not hearing much of, it, of anything. So if you don't mind static as the background music, we'll leave that for a minute. All right, so I'll... Uh, Cut a couple of leads here and we'll get back to business. And you can see I still have that paralleled cap to give me a little bit more VFO range. I'm going to leave that in for now until we get it running and decide uh, what is a good amount of tuning range for both coverage but being able to actually tune the radio because I'm finding on that on the NorCal 40A with a single turn pot I think 60 kilohertz is just the edge of where when you're scanning the band you can easily skip a station because it's so sharp I think the 10 turn pot will be probably good for uh, 70 or 80 kilohertz maybe even 100 kilohertz I'm out of solder here. That one popped down there nicely. I'm going to do that one again. All right, there's a few more we can do before the trees start getting in the way. Not many, though. 
So we can pick up one over on the side. It was a bit funny, I got that NorCal 40, I powered it up, and I thought, the thing is totally quiet. So I peaked up the uh, the two capacitors to peak up the input receiver, and like I, I could hear a little bit of static, and I thought, oh, I got a bogus radio. Then I realized the antenna switch was switched to the other radio, so it was fairly sensitive that even with the switch in the wrong position, it could hear just a bit of 40 meter background noise, so that was pretty good. When I flipped the switch, it was a pleasant surprise that the noise level came up. So I'll show you, here's the uh, switch in the wrong place. And uh, here's the volume all the way up. Yeah, barely can hear anything. Anyway, that was the nice surprise to hear that there actually was some receiving going on. And I think we'll call it good for this round. I'll come back and show you the rest soon.